As the day goes on, Thayawadi, the pleasant city, is slowly abandoned. Its inhabitants are on their way to a procession to the top of the hill, bearing trees of abundance decorated with 100 chatbills that are supposed to bring prosperity to Thamanya. The birthday celebration has begun. On top of Thamanya Hill, the Sayadaw sits on his throne in the great preaching hall. He'll spend the entire morning blessing pilgrims and collecting their gifts. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the foot of the hill, monks have gathered to receive alms. Some are impatient, but Upandita is there to supervise and ensure order. Each monk receives his share, a bundle holding a blanket and a brand new pair of sandals. They also receive an umbrella and an envelope with this year's allotment of 2,000 chats. Most of the monks leave the same day, right after having received their gifts. They return to their monasteries, but most of them will be back next year. The Sayadaw's birthday has become an inevitable event. The sun rises over the empty city. The travelers have left and the town has regained its daily peace. But behind this apparent peacefulness, Tamanya is plunged into the heart of an intense political war. This enclosure represents high stakes for the Burmese junta as well as for the opponents to the regime. Fortunately, Thamanya is a military-free zone. 
Neither the Burmese army nor the police are present. The only armed men to be seen are the rebels of the Karen ethnic group who signed a ceasefire with the government in 1995. They are allowed to move freely, but outside of Thamanya, they still fight the rebels who have refused to compromise with the military. Thamanya has contributed to pacify this historically unstable region, but peace remains a fragile notion. Since the 1988 coup d'etat, the Burmese government has persistently strived to win back legitimate power. Thus, the generals flatter the highest religious dignitaries and they invest considerable sums of money in donations and gifts to seduce the most respected monks and gain their support. The Sayadaw has always kept a safe distance from the military. When asked what he thinks of the Rangoon government, he speaks his mind. His forefinger raised towards the sky and bent downward means he broods the Rangoon government. He openly expressed Thamanya's political independence for the first time in 1992, when he turned down the Burmese government's invitation and didn't go to the capital. This bravery won him even more esteem among the people and helped him to preserve the territory's self-rule. However, the Sayadaw is engaged in a perilous battle. He is indeed well protected by his strong popularity and his financial income is considerable. But for how long will it be in the military's interest to let him rule his territory? For how long can the Sayadaw assume this complicated struggle for power on his own? Thanks to mainly his incentive, the area is at peace. The government is aware of this, and that probably explains its tolerance of the Sayadaw. What will happen when the Sayadaw passes away? The citizens of Thayawadi, the pleasant city, are apparently oblivious to the threat that weighs on Thamanya. Are they at all aware of to what extent their peaceful existence is in the hands of one single old man? Every morning, the chiefs of the town's 21 quarters roam the streets gathering money. Some of them have been here for 15 years. Most of them have forgotten how unlikely it is for a mushroom city to pop up out of nowhere thanks to the determination of one man alone. However, other famous monks have created places of pilgrimage in the past, and when they died, no one came back to them, and the sanctuaries were left abandoned. In Thamanya's case, the death of the Sayadaw would jeopardize the existence of the small city of Thayawadi. The Burmese government could well grasp the opportunity to secure its power permanently. Must the work of a man die with him? Is this utopian territory, this haven of peace and freedom, doomed to become the haunted hill it was once before? The question is on everyone's mind. But the Sayadaw has not yet designated a successor, and the people await some kind of miracle, trustfully and optimistically. Hey, 
The future will tell if the mania can be no more than a short-lived dream. But it will have changed the lives of thousands and given hope to millions of others. When the Nobel Peace Prize winner Aung San Suu Kyi was freed after six years of house arrest, her first voyage outside the capital took her to Thamanya. For her, Thamanya must remain an example to follow for Burma and its people. There was much for us to think about as we drove away toward Ba'an. The mere contrast between the miles of carelessly constructed and ill-maintained roads we had traveled from Rangoon and the smoothness of the roads in Tamanya had shown us that no project could be successfully implemented without the willing cooperation of those concerned. People will contribute hard work and money cheerfully if they are handled with kindness and care, and if they are convinced that their contributions will truly benefit the public. The works of the Sayada are upheld by the donations of devotees who know beyond the shadow of a doubt that everything that is given to him will be used for the good of others. How fine it would be if such a spirit of service were to spread across the land. Some have questioned the appropriateness of talking about such matters as loving kindness and truth in the political context. But politics is about people, and what we had seen in Tamanya proved that love and truth can move people more strongly than any form of coercion. Lo de mi